And what's going on, everyone? Welcome to this special digital edition of NHL Now, brought to you by Chipotle. Get free delivery in app and online. Lauren Gardner, EJ Raddick, coming to you from our quarantine camps, as I love to call it. Joined today by the voice of the Pittsburgh Penguins, Steve Mears. Mearsy, first of all, I'm loving this reunion between you and EJ. And second of all, I'm thoroughly impressed with your skills in the kitchen, my friend, your Twitter post of those French macarons two Sundays ago, not that I did some digging, but those look pretty good. It's, that's not an easy feat. Thank you. It was tricky. They're, they're not easy. Yeah. I, that was the first time I made them. And EJ, as you know, our good friend John McClain has said that's before nice. that I have a good, uh, as a good, I have a good fork. Good so I, I thought that was the best compliment I could ever have. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was tricky. It was uh, it was tough, but I've got nothing else to do. I just I, I'm always cooking every day. Try to treat yourself every once in a while. Get a nice dessert. So I went with the uh, raspberry and chocolate macaroons. Unfortunately, they're all gone. I would have sent you some. They are all gone. They went quickly. Mirzi, was it hard to get someone to deliver those to your house? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's hard times now. It, it's I much mean. better. You notice the finesse that goes into it. And I know <laughs> you have your peanut butter and jelly sandwich. This is much different. This yeah, is way that's different. True. This is finesse. True. This is skill. Yeah. This is chocolate, raspberry. You got to mix it all together, all yeah, in flour. It was tricky. It requires some skills. All right. No, it really well, does. Listen, it it gives you nice. some context. Yeah. I have a friend who tried five times before she perfected it. It, so, it was so back. Exactly like that. They say it's really hard and very finicky. A lot can go wrong. I think it went pretty well. They're a little misshaped and they're a little uh, off on the sides of the symmetry, but it's okay. I'll take it. Hey, it's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. So good job. Good job by you. How have you been holding up, Mirza? We've talked to a number of players and talked to different people around the business, and we're all kind of in this together. Like, what have you been doing to stay busy? Because you're used to preparing and getting out there and doing these games. Yeah, EJ, it, it feels like it was two years ago that we were in Columbus yeah. getting ready for that game. Remember, we were going to be playing that game with no fans in Columbus. Yeah. We were part, it was part of a road trip, uh, and it obviously would have been a really big game, Penguins and Blue Jackets. We are in Columbus. It was amazing how quickly it escalated from we're not going in the locker room and we're talking to the players from a distance to then it's going to be no fans, and then all of a sudden the next day, as we had expected, the uh, league was put on pause, but uh, you know what? Here, uh, boredom is not in my vocabulary. I got <laughs> cooking. I've got <laughs> my guitar. I love the classic games. I think it's so great to be able to yeah. watch all the old games on NHL Network, some old Penguin Classic, Stanley Cup winners here in Pittsburgh locally. We've been airing a lot of the great games from 2009 and the two cup runs in 2016 and 17. So if there is one positive, we can reminisce a little bit and uh, look back on some great memories, especially here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, you certainly can. And obviously, you were talking about that big game that was supposed to be played in Columbus. Uh, obviously, Pittsburgh got three and eight in their last 11 games leading up to this. So uh, when a lot of people are saying, hey, like momentum was on our side, when it comes to the pins, maybe if, you know, if and hopefully when the season resumes, this could be a good thing for them to kind of hit the reset button. Yeah, it's possible, and also get healthy. They were starting to get healthy. They got John Marino back and Brian Dumoulin. They were incorporating a lot of the new players that they acquired at the trade deadline, like Patrick Marlowe, Connor Sherry, and, and Jason Zucker. Uh, but still, that was a lot of wear and tear, playing a hard style of hockey, and a lot of miles on, on some of those guys. So they had to play increased workloads in the absence of players like Crosby and Dumoulin and Marino and so forth. Just about everybody had some stint on the – injured list at some point for the Penguins here this year. So yeah, that, that would be one way to look at it. They did have a really impressive win. Their last game was in New Jersey and the Devils have been playing pretty well. They embraced the spoiler role and the Penguins had a strong win. That was the last game that they played. So it looked like things were starting to come together. Evan Rodriguez got a goal in that game, another one of the new players. It looked like things were starting to come together a little bit. And then you have the shutdown, unfortunately, but uh, for a while there, it was looking a little dicey. There were a couple of games, Washington and Carolina, two big home games on a weekend, and the team suffered a couple of losses. So there were some concerns, and then those concerns were quieted a little bit with the victory in New Jersey. It was all leading up to the game in Columbus, and unfortunately that one, as we know, wasn't played. So uh, I think, yeah, if there's one team with all the man games lost due to injury all year, if there's one team that could 
benefit from a reset and just kind of a break, it's the Penguins. Hey, there's the, uh, you know, it, it's interesting. The commissioner has been on record as saying, hey, that, you know, we would, they would, we want to get started again at some point when and if they can. He talked, uh, you know, also about the idea of playing well into the summer. Injuries, you mentioned them. The Penguins could really benefit if we get going again at some point because Jake Gensel, he was looked like he was lost. Now he could be back in the mix if and when we can get playing again. Yeah, that's that's what we're hoping for. Uh, that, that would be the best case scenario with, with Gensel. The, the time frame had him returning from his shoulder surgery at best second round of the playoffs, maybe the third if they got that far. And that was the best case scenario of four to six months. So now if he were to be able to get healthy and come back for what would be some type of postseason, that'd be gigantic. I mean, the guy was already at 20 goals. He was already on pace for another 40 goal campaign. You know about the, the chemistry he has with Sidney Crosby, but he had played really well with Malkin and Russ. They had been an incredible line for the Pens. So uh, it's for him to get back if we do resume the season and for him to be a, hel a healthy player for the Penguins would be crucial. Um, you look at the ice time for the Pens among the entire team, not just the forwards. It's Latang, Dumoulin, and Gensel. He's the third most as far as time on ice. The more than Crosby, he plays in every situation. That's how important he is. Wow, that's pretty incredible. So we just have a couple of minutes remaining, and I would be remiss if I didn't ask you in this reunion between you and Age to give us either your favorite memory or maybe an embarrassing story because that's what we like to do here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I keep waiting for the acknowledgement of my uh, EJ pictures here, just for yeah. anyone who didn't know from earlier yeah. in the season. Those are up Thank in your round, right? Thank you. That you know, he kept criticizing me because my walls were blank. There was there's nothing up there. It's a bookshelf, and then it's like True. the ceiling, basically. I don't know what yeah. he was expecting a Picasso to be up there, but I yeah. finally threw those up there. And I yeah. uh, don't think that they just get thrown up because I'm doing the segment on the show. They no. stay up there. Of course, they don't come right. in this room at all for that yeah. reason. But still, <laughs> it is up there. And uh, yeah, lots of great memories. U2 concert. That was what? That was 2017 Stanley Cup final. That I was think nice so. Right yeah, here that was great. We had yeah. a great time. That uh, was so great. Many, um, so many amazing memories. I always go back, though, EJ, and you'll probably agree, the one show and the memory we shared, I think, Bobby Orr in the studio yep. when he was doing hey, his book tour. It's right here. There, there it is. is. The yeah. picture with being with Bobby Orr. <laughs> I, I cut you out of the photo. I don't know if you can tell. I just <laughs> cut you. There wasn't enough room, Mirzi. There wasn't enough room. That's okay. I will gladly defer to yeah. number four any day of the oh, week. Yeah. And those bobbleheads, I got a Facebook notification Six years ago today, I posted that photo with really? the Stanley Cup and those two bobbleheads. Wow. How ironic is that? And I saw that's that, crazy. and that was before you guys invited me on. So uh, that's that's amazing. I saw those crazy. bobbleheads. I have one of them. The other one on the left, I've uh, thrown out. The one on the right, I have many of those. Yes. Yeah. You well, hey. It when you have your own bobblehead. That's true. That's true. I don't know what happened to those mirrors. I, I, I remember them being – I remember them. But I am, that's the first time I've seen them probably since we had them. So, I don't you know. You look interesting with your, uh, with your notes and your cup, and you kind of look like Stephen Colbert. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's I appreciate that. Yeah, I like that. Not bad. That's, not, that's not so bad. That's not, not bad so bad. You know, the one thing I remember about that Bobby Orr interview, we're having this great interview with Bobby Orr, and out of nowhere, Mears, is, uh, Mears your like, iPad went off. Yes. And we started playing loud music and we had to stop everything. And that like never happened ever before. I or know. After. Like, I know. It's ridiculous. That never, I don't know what the actual never happened. Was, why that happened. I didn't touch it. It just went I know, off. I know. In the middle of all the times we're pre taping the Bobby Orr interview. Remember, he was so gracious. He's like, yeah, no big deal. I'll repeat the, the answers. I have no, no problem at all. And it was like a Kanye West song that came on. Because what else do you think about anything Bobby Orr? Is Kanye West is blaring in the background. But I don't know. It was just a weird thing. But he could not have been more he great. He was great. He was it. great about it. Yep. Um, well, I'm sure that, crazy. yeah, made for uh, memorable television, at least. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mirzi, thank you so much for joining us. I can't believe we're out of time. This completely flew by. But enjoy the rest of your quarantine. Stay healthy. Stay yeah. safe. And, uh Hopefully we will get to hear those golden pipes here sooner rather than later. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Stay safe. Uh, you guys are doing a great job. Love the content. Love everything that you're doing. Thanks for having me. 
right. All right. Well, that does it for this digital edition of NHL Now presented by Chipotle. Get free delivery in app and online.